on way to begin the program. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our small business forum, serving up, serving up support addressing the concerns of our local restaurants. I'm Chris Conway, I'm the Executive Director of the West Hartford Chamber of Commerce, and I would like to welcome you here today for this very important forum. As many of you know, uh, the restaurant industry was hit earliest and hardest during the pandemic, and uh, there's been a great need of support for our local restaurants. Um, it certainly, it starts with our town and under the leadership of Mayor Cantor, who, who along with her, her her town staff responded immediately and supported our restaurants with things like the outside corralling and many other initiatives. Um, I would also like to just acknowledge our state delegation who is with us today. Again, extremely responsive and supportive of trying to figure out solutions to help our restaurants uh, move on. We are also joined today with Senator Murphy, Chris Murphy, and we will be joined a little bit later by Senator Richard Blumenthal. Uh, first of all, I would just like to say uh, we are happy to have both of them with us today and know that they and their staffs are safe uh, after the events of Wednesday. So thank you for your leadership and for being with us today. Um, this is a very, um, we want this to be a very interactive program and we'd like to get started. So I'm gonna turn the um, screen over to, uh, the Town of West Hartford's Economic Development Coordinator, Kristen Gorski. Uh, go ahead, Kristen. Great, thank you so much, Chris, and good morning, everyone. Um, first, I would actually like to welcome our wonderful mayor, Sherry Cantor, in order to give a couple of welcoming remarks. Thank you so much. And uh, Senator, we're so appreciative that you're here. Number one, we are so grateful that you are safe and well, um, at, at least physically. Um, but it, it, we understand what, it, what a challenging uh, time our country is in and your leadership, um, your steadfastness, your ethics, your morals, your, your, uh, we're so lucky to have you. And, and thank you from, um, we are so, again, grateful and proud of the work that you do every day. And uh, I'm, I am grateful to our delegation who has been partners with us uh, in every challenge uh, and we know going forward we're going to have uh, lots of work to do uh, to recover uh, from our communities and, and our state. Um, and our economic development um, coordinator Chris Ngorski has worked so hard uh, as the voice of business uh, and partnered so well with the Chamber of Commerce. It really is such an amazing partnership. And every time I send out any information or they send it's the communication, the walls are low, the, you know, it's a, it's a great, um, a, a great example of, of, I think the benefits of what's come out of this pandemic. Um, restaurants are the lifeblood of the, our community, many communities, and we are West Hartford it has been known to be a destination, at least for the past uh, for several decades of restaurants. We were early to embrace outdoor dining and to, and, and to have a vibrant center. And we kn know the restaurants from every center in our town. We don't have one center, we have multiple centers of our town. And there is such a, a love and a connection uh, to restaurants. And we all have had those special moments, whether it's um, sharing a, a news of a baby or a, a book club uh, sharing or or a divorce or a, some heartbreaking um, support that we've provided uh, with people. We've shared those wonderful moments and those uh, sensitive moments in restaurants and you're part and you're entrenched in our lives and you're, a, you know, we're part of the thread of, of all of our, of our community. And we're just, um, we know how hard uh, it's been, or we think we know <laughs> how hard it's been. I don't think we really, really know, um, but we're here to help. And I, uh, again, thank you all for, for being here, for listening uh, and coming together and figuring out how we can help these incredible businesses survive until we're thriving again. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, Mayor. We really appreciate it. Um, in order to kick off today's panel, I would like to again, um, thank very much so for valuable time uh, spent both of our senators, uh, Senator Chris Murphy, as well as Senator Richard Blumenthal, who will be joining us shortly. In addition, we would like to thank uh, State Senator Derek Slapp for joining us, as well as State Representative 
Jillian Gilcrest, State Representative Tammy Exum, as well as newly elected uh, State Representative Kate Farrar. Thank you so much for being here on this panel today. Um, as an, as a, an additional introduction in order to set up this panel, um, this is not new news, uh, you know, especially to our U.S. senators, but our restaurant industry has, as the mayor teed up and said, it has been hit so incredibly hard. Um, in West Hartford in particular, we have over 160 food establishments with several more culinary hopefuls uh, opening up spots uh, in storefronts rather in our town um, over the course of the pandemic. Our restaurants are located in all of our commercial districts as well as some of our neighborhood districts. And they're really a vital piece of our business ecosystem. And, you know, what we are really hearing, and we will hear from a couple of our restaurateurs today who we welcome to speak, um, what we're hearing is, especially over the last couple of months and the colder months, it has been incredibly challenging. You know, a lot of the events that they would have surrounding the holidays and the end of the year were non-existent, catering events and, and such, and very honestly, there has been a tremendous decrease in revenues across the board, um, you know, really to frightening levels. Um, you know, that also has pushed a couple of our restaurants into temporary closures, and there really is no hope, no, um, no guarantee rather that they will reopen, um, you know, ever. And, and obviously we hope that they do, but, um, you know, obviously that's a very um, real example of of what's going on here and what some of our restaurants have been forced to do at this point. So to begin, um, we would like to be able to give our, uh, our U.S. Senators an opportunity in order to speak a little bit about the most recent uh, federal stimulus package that was passed, including um, highlighting a couple of the support opportunities for small businesses. And then I'd like to welcome uh, three of our restaurateurs who are here today to hear their stories and also based on their stories, then I'd like to welcome any of our panelists to respond. Um, so with that being said, uh, Senator Murphy, would you like to um, hop on and, and talk a little bit about the most recent stimulus package? Uh, great. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Great. Uh, Kristen, uh, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, Mayor, thanks for being such a, a great friend and counsel to uh, both Dick and I, to the state delegation. Um, thanks for joining us uh, here today. Um, and um, let me just reiterate what Sherry said. Um, you know, the, the West Hartford restaurant community um, is not just an asset to the citizens of West Hartford, it is a regional asset, right? Um, this is one of the most vibrant series of business districts um, in the greater Hartford region. And it, it um, drives um, economic growth uh, for West Hartford, but it frankly drives economic growth uh, for the Hartford metro region. This is one of the selling points uh, for businesses that are thinking of coming and locating in Connecticut. This is a place that young people um, see as an asset when they are thinking about whether they are going to stay in Connecticut or they are going to come to Connecticut for a job. And so we have to, you know, recognize that as, as, as much as Sherry is right, that, you know, these restaurants are so intimately connected to, to our lives. Um, they are also intimately connected to um, our strategy for growth as a state. And so if this becomes you know, a mass extinction event for restaurants, especially in West Hartford, um, it has serious ramifications for Connecticut's economic growth moving forward. Um, and what is so amazing to me is how you know, West Hartford has really stepped up in so many new and innovative ways. Tammy and I were uh, at Fleet Feet uh, oh, oh, a week ago, or maybe it was two days ago. I have no idea um, <laughs> at this point, um, the difference between hours and days, uh, given what has happened uh, in the last week. But um, Tammy was talking about how, you know, retailers have been giving over the holiday season gift certificates 
to restaurants. So if you come in and spend some money on sneakers, you'll walk out with sneakers and a little bit of money to spend in a restaurant. And, and, and that really tells you all you need to know about, you know, frankly, the community that um, West Hartford and the chamber have, have, have built that brings everybody together. Um, because I'm going to have to run to the bottom of the hour. I, I, Dick may end up talking more about the details of the new round of PPP, but um, it, it's a significant uh, about $300 billion. There's also um, a new fund of about $40 billion dedicated uh, to minority uh, owned and targeted financial institutions. So one of the things we um, saw in the first round was that there were some um, lightly banked restaurants, um, you know, folks that didn't have long standing banking relationships with the big guys that were left on the outside. Um, and so we, and, you know, some of those are, you know, food trucks, um, are, are um, sort of non uh, catering companies. Uh, and so we have set up a separate facility that is going to be dedicated just to minority owned um, restaurants and businesses. The new PPP program um, has two categories, one for first timers, folks who are coming for their first loan, and then another for businesses that got around in uh, the spring or summer. If you're coming back to the PPP program for another round, you are gonna have to show you know, a 25% diminution in revenue from um, a, uh, the same quarter in uh, 2019. Um, but for restaurants, we've also uh, allowed for a little additional money beyond we gave out the first time around we're doing, I, I think I don't have it in front of me, but I think we're doing three and a half times payroll for restaurants alone, understanding that um, we need to have targeted relief to restaurants. And, and frankly, we fought really hard in the Northeast um, along with folks in the Midwest for this specific targeted restaurant support, because uh, as was mentioned, um, without outdoor dining in uh, the Northeast, we know what's going to happen to a lot of restaurants this winter. So that provision, just allowing for a, a little bit more support for restaurants was something that we fought for in the colder weather states. Um, lastly, uh, because I want to hear from um, from other folks, you know, the other provisions of the bill are really important as well, um, because um, what what Restaurants and retailers need and want, frankly, is not cash assistance, um, it's customers. And, you know, that has something to do with the state regulations and how many people you can have in at any one time. But it also has a lot to do with demand. And when the economy is hemorrhaging, there just aren't folks that are interested in going out to eat like they were a year ago. And so that's why we fought really hard for the unemployment benefits. That's why we fought uh, really, really hard for these cash payments. I think the first thing that we're going to do on January 21st in the Senate, when Democrats take control of the Senate, is to put on the floor the $2,000 cash payment bill. Um, we actually think we have the support for that in the Senate. Um, uh, we, we have enough Republicans who have said they'd vote for it, that if we bring it up, we can pass it, we can pass it in the House, and we can get it signed into law. That's a that's a serious infusion of money uh, into the economy. That's going to be good news for everybody. And then very lastly, just um, I've been working with a lot of you on some innovative ways to get um, more help to restaurants uh, who want to be involved in feeding the hungry. Restaurants in West Harvard already do that. Um, but uh, I have a piece of legislation that I'm about to introduce. Sim I've, I've been involved in trying to get more um, SNAP benefits eligible for restaurant carryout. Uh, so I've been working on that for a long time. Um, traditionally, SNAP benefits aren't being able to be used in restaurants. Um, but I'm also now trying to get significant federal funding so that restaurants um, can actually get fully compensated by the state uh, for um, any uh, um, food service they do to feed the indigent and poor. So if you're a restaurant and you decide to do a series of bag lunches every Friday uh, for people in your community, you can qualify for 100% reimbursement from the federal government for that. Uh, so we're working on that legislation as, as, as well. So I'll stop there. Just I'm so grateful um, to, uh, to everything uh, small business owners have done to um, stay uh, alive and open 
Uh, and hopefully this next round of PPP, in addition to this new infusion of money into the pocketbooks of people who need it, um, is going to help get as many restaurants through this winter as possible. Great. Thank you so much, Senator. We greatly appreciate those remarks. Um, you know, in order to um, to be able to tee up our first uh, restaurant tour and um, the first story that we'll hear, um, for those of you who may have seen or are familiar, um, there was recently, um, earlier this week, there was an updated, um, some updated information regarding uh, coronavirus clusters in the state of Connecticut. And some of the headlines referred to uh, restaurants in particular as being a major spreader. And if you dug further down into that data and into those articles, it was really more focused on back of house staff, um, not necessarily patrons who would come um, and eat indoors at a restaurant. And so I think over the course of this pandemic, especially the last couple of months, we have absolutely heard both at a local level and a national level how unsafe it is to indoor dine. But when you kind of dig down on the data, it seems, again, like it's resulting at an employee level or if people are coming from multiple households, not in particular, just if you know, you're coming with your family, which has really, really decreased consumer confidence and, and um, tremendously impacted our restaurants. So I would like to next invite one of our restaurateurs, Chip Cohn. Um, Chip is uh, an owner of um, the Beachland Group in West Hartford. He runs, owns three restaurants. We are so grateful for that. Um, Chip is the owner of Beachland Tavern, Beachland Smoke, as well as Rockledge Grill. And I'd like to hear some remarks uh, from him regarding his experiences over the last couple of months and the pandemic. Um, Chip, are you able to jump on? I'm here. Can everybody hear me? Yes, thank you. Oh, great. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you to all the Connecticut representatives, our elected officials for being on the call today. Uh, it really is important that you hear from us. And I'd just like to go through a couple things of what we're facing on the ground. And like Kristen said, the the messaging really has been terrible for us, and it's, it's come from a lot of different sources. It's come from politicians, it's come from media, and every time anything comes out about restaurants, it's that they're one of the most dangerous places, that's where the spread is occurring. But like that article that Kristen was just talking about, the headline was, restaurants are still a top infection spot. But you dig down a little bit and it says really what it's coming from is employee to employee, it's really mostly in the back of the house. So what that tells me is we really need to be characterized differently. We need to be a workplace spread because that's what we are. We spread like any other workplace. It's really not going to our guests, to our customers. It's going between our employees. In my situation, let's see, we have three restaurants. We've been open for 10 months. We've had five cases and they've all come from the home. So. I think what needs to happen and the change that needs to be made, and we really need help in getting this message out, is that if you come into restaurants and you go into the ones that are doing things properly, where we've followed all the guidelines, um, and if you come with people that are in your pod, and I think that's important, we're all living in pods right now, and if you come to our restaurant and you stay in your pod, you have a very low chance of leaving with coronavirus. Um, and, and that, I think, is just a message that hasn't been out there. And what needs to be said is, look, you can come in a restaurant, you're going to be safe, you're in your pod, you're going to be fine. And if you see your friends there and you stand up to say hello to them, put your mask on, use hand sanitizer, keep socially distanced, and, and the restaurants really are safe. We have done more than most industries and spent tens of thousands of dollars on tents, on plexiglass, on all sorts of things to to make sure that we are abiding to these regulations. But every time we turn around, we have news articles, we have Bill Gates, we've got you know 32 Yale doctors writing a letter to Lamont saying that we're not safe, which just isn't true. And you look at the numbers in New York and the study in LA, when they closed their dining, I think it was 1.4% in New York, 3.2% in LA of the cases, yet they still shut down their restaurants. So that's what we're facing. Um, and we're making really hard decisions right now. And, and like for Beachland, I completely changed over to takeout and I changed over to prepared foods only. And we had the worst December we've ever had. We only did 20% of our sales last December. And that was a place that was consistently busy. But what's happened is the regulations in Connecticut have really shut us down without shutting us down. 
because now we have to face a 9.30 curfew. We can potentially get a $10,000 fine if we serve a uh, beer with a small bowl of soup instead of a large bowl of soup. I mean, in that regulation, really, I mean, it reads like a Seinfeld episode. And these are the things that, that we have to follow. Um, and then this weekend's a perfect example. We've got three football games on Saturday. We have three football games on Sunday. We have a national championship on Monday. I'm not even going to be allowed to stay open until halftime of the last games or on Monday of the national championship game. And really, that is not preventing COVID. That's treating restaurant owners like children. And we really need, and I agree that there are places like, that are acting like bars, and those places need to be shut down or they need to be fined. But for those of us doing it right, we have really put a lot of money into this, and we're making sure things are safe, and we really need that, that message out. Um, and just to finish up, just so everybody understands, and I'm happy to share my real numbers and what I've been facing. And what happened is, first of all, the PPP is a good program, but it was designed for 10 weeks. It's now been 10 months. The second round, frankly, has been very slow coming out. And not um, clarifying the IRS code for the last 10 months has given us tons and tons of sleepless nights, not knowing if we're going to be able to take these expenses on our taxes or not. And that really should have been fixed right away so that we know and we can plan. Businesses have to plan. So for me, I took the disaster loans right away, and that's the only thing that's kept me in business. But for me, it was a million dollars through three restaurants. And now what I face starting in April is I have a $4,874 payment starting this April for the next 30 years of my life, and it's owed all to the U.S. government. And that really should not be what's left in the wake of a pandemic, is that a small business owner now has a $5,000 payment for the rest of his life. And that amounts to $58,000 every single year or $1.75 million over the life of a loan. And I'll be 75 when I pay that off. And that really has to be forgiven because there, I did not need that on March 1st. On March 1st, I had $500,000 left in debt. On three restaurants, I had 85 employees. Today, I have 25 employees. We were down 47% in sales last year. And frankly, I don't even have enough business for the 25 employees that I have right now. Um, and it's really too bad. And that's the other side of this is our employees are hurting and they can't find other jobs. They have nowhere else to go. So when I lay them off, which I had to do all the way through Christmas, which was heartbreaking, they have nowhere to go and they have no resources in order to pay for their bills. Um, and for me, you know, we ended up losing $400,000 last year because we were down 47%. And that money I had to borrow from the U.S. government and now owe them starting in April because I didn't have $400,000 to lose. But if I didn't take that disaster loan, I would be out of business. So I agree that the new PPP is a good thing and I'm happy that it's finally coming. Um, but what we really need is targeted relief for restaurants. And however that looks, I mean, that's the only way we're gonna make it through. And none of us know how long this is gonna last and when that consumer confidence is, is gonna be back. So thank you, Kristen. Wow, thank you so much, Chip. Um, we certainly appreciate your very candid um, comments. Uh, would any of our panelists like to take an opportunity to respond to anything that Chip had to say? Uh, this is Dick Blumenthal. Uh, and uh, first of all, uh, Kristen, thank you so much. I apologize that I've been late getting on the call, but uh, I uh, was on in time to hear Chip's very powerful and eloquent summary of where he is. And the only point I'd like to make, and I assume that there has been a description of the second round of PPP, which uh, Chip, you're absolutely right. We waited too long for it. And it should have been bigger. The whole package should have been much larger. And as you probably know from just having read and heard what I was saying, and my colleague Chris Murphy and others in our delegation, we were fighting for a bigger package. And I'm not going to belabor the series of events that led us to the package that eventually was passed, but you well know that we started with a two point two plus trillion dollar program, which was whittled down. And eventually we were thankful to have even the nine $06 billion program. But uh, the point here is that the SBA is moving it, I think, at least we are pushing it to move as fast as possible with the second round of PPP. It's available to 
groups and restaurants uh, and, and others who were not eligible previously, even if they received a first round, uh, restaurants are eligible to receive 3.5 rather than 2.5 of their expenses. The kinds of expenses eligible to be covered have been enlarged. But the most important point I want to make is we need another major, robust pandemic relief effort. And the good news is that I believe that Joe Biden is going to do it, not just a $2,000 stimulus payment, but also aid to small businesses of innovative and ingenious kinds, but in sufficient size that they really will help you get through this chasm. You know, we thought it was going to be a gap. As you just observed, it turned into a chasm of economic crisis. And more than just the temporary down payment that we've seen in this $900 billion, $906 billion program, we need a major relief program. And the other point, um, a very good point, that I think we all need to keep in mind is, as, as you have said in closing, uh, this pandemic relief effort has to be comprehensive. It has to be multifaceted. Until people feel safe and secure about going out to eat again or going to movie theaters or uh, any of the public places where uh, restaurants uh, and, and other venues thrive, they have to feel that we've turned the corner on this pandemic. And that involves a national strategy for vaccine distribution. 100, 100 million inoculation in the first 100 days, I think is not only realistic, it's a must. Using the National Defense Act uh, to do it is a must. And uh, I look forward now with a new administration after January 20th and a new Congress with a majority that will support a major relief program to uh, really working very hard. It has to be our focus even now and we're working on it even now in the committees where I sit, for example, the Commerce Committee. And I'm hopeful that we can meet the crisis that you have just stated so well. And uh, I'd love to sit down with you, Chip, uh, visit your restaurants. I've been all around the state. And as you know, very active on the Save Our Stages program as well. Pleased that we got some relief for Save Our Stages for the entertainment bad news, the Bushnell, uh, Real Art Ways, the Hartford Stage, and across the state, all of our entertainment vet venues because they are part of an ecosystem involving restaurants and uh, making sure that the retailers and the restaurants and the entertainment venues are all reviving and prospering at the same time because they are linked inextricably. So um, Chip, I, I think I've responded to a few of your points. Uh, I, I think you are right to, um, to, to be uh, urgent and demanding, and I hope we can respond. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Senator Blumenthal. We appreciate you joining us and, and absolutely appreciate those really um, well put remarks. Um, next, I would like to introduce another restaurateur in town. Uh, Tiffany Nugent is the owner of Faux 135. Um, you know, Tiffany uh, has spoken with myself as well as the chamber throughout the extent of the pandemic, and it certainly has not been an easy road um, for her. We spent close to an hour on the phone yesterday catching up. And, and talking about a couple specific items, which we'd uh, really like for her to share here, um, you know, when it comes to tips and minimum wage, um, utilities, really significant, um, you know, additional burdens, financial burdens on the business owner. Um, so Tiffany, would you be available to uh, give your story, please? Hi everyone, thank you for um, everyone time and support um, on this conference call today. Um, I have to say what Chip was sharing was very powerful and I have to 
I was taking note and I was nodding myself because I'm, I was so agree with him and so many um, points that he was making. Um, definitely restaurant is not a dangerous place uh, as the news was sharing. And we are, as a, as a restaurant business owner, we spend so much money in buying the supply to keep our restaurant sanitized. So for my own restaurant, I make sure that my employees wiping down uh, the restaurant twice a day and using, you know, Clorox and wipes and spray. And, um, and we spend a ton of money. And I was telling Kristen yesterday that gloves are so expensive right now. It went up to $95 a box. And I go through uh, every two weeks uh, a box of that. And you do the math. Uh, we've been buying that. We've been buying the gloves since, what, March until now. Um, my restaurant is on a smaller scale compared to Chip. Um, I have a 2,100 square foot restaurant. Um, and I, I only have one. And I, I'm a brand new restaurant owner. I opened up in uh, 2018. Um August into 2018, so it's only about two years, and pretty much 2020, uh, it's a wash for me. Uh, there was no business for me really much. Um, uh, the the restaurant was really established in 2019, and that's what was my first full year. But then 2020 hit with COVID, uh, so it's really a wash for me. Um, so I'm struggling even more compared to what Chip is going through, and I'm trying to employ all my employees so that. Um, they don't get hurt with losing their job as well. Um, so I also agree with Chip in terms of the loan, uh, the SBA, the federal SBA uh, loan. The interest rate is so high. I mean, after all this COVID, we're going to recover. I know that. Um, but it's going to take us restaurant owners a couple of years to get back to what we lost. And then on top of that, we have all these loans that we're going to have to make payments. I mean, you're looking at another mortgage, right? To pay on top of another mortgage that you already have. So any sort of uh, funding or cash that could give it to us, uh, if they could do like the SBA loan could have a forgiveness things, almost like the PPP would be really helpful uh, to what I understand. Um, another concerns that I have um, that I shared with Kristen yesterday was the unemployment tax. Uh, we're all small business owner and we're responsible for a portion of the unemployment tax, right? Um, and everybody collecting unemployment tax right now. I mean, all my 15 employees collecting ever since March and um, unemployment pay them a portion, even they going back to work, they still getting a portion of the unemployment if they basically, if there's a gap. Um, so. I'm, co I'm continuing paying some of the taxes for that as well while I'm paying payroll for them. So I understand that, you know, they need that kind of help, but how is that going to affect us as a business owner when it's, when it's time for us to pay tax in the future? Because they're going to look at the, the performance in the past year to predicting our future unemployment tax. So that's another thing that I, I urge that someone to look at it for us. Um, and then as for me personally, I'm a minority, I'm a woman. Um, I own two, two different businesses, the two different entities. I own an insurance business and I own the restaurant. Um, but for the past seven months, I've been getting, I have to get money from my other business to kind of subsidize my restaurant. And it's, it's putting both of my business in jeopardy um, financially. So I'm very concerned and I'm very, um, it's kind of scared that both of my business will kind of go down the ditch together. Um, so, like I said, I, I think Chip is very powerful. His message is powerful. Um, and I think also the vaccine, um, if that's roll out, if we can actually, the, the restaurant workers, if we can get the vaccine up front, you know, that would help a lot as well. Um, so, since March, my restaurant has two COVID cases, and the first case, uh, we catch it early, so we we quarantined the person that was sick, um, and we were we were not forced to um, close the restaurant. Unfortunately, the most recent one, I had another positive case, and uh, health health department um, advised that 
I quarantine all the employees that actually directly working with that uh, sick person. And that forces me to close the restaurant down. So we've been closed for 10 days now. Um, but uh, I would say seven out of 10 of us that was directly uh, interact with that sick person already tested and we are negative. And that proven to me, mask works, right? I urge all my employees, they wear masks all day. They cannot take their mask out. They only take their mask out when they eat their lunch. Um, and they sit six feet apart. So that proven to me, if we follow the protocol, we wear our mask, we wear our gloves, even if we have a positive case, when we're going to be okay. So if the health department understand that and not quarantine all my employees, because that will force me to shut down the business. And that's, that's critical. You know, 10 days of, of income is, is a lot for a small business like me. Um, so that's another message I want to kind of spread out there. And um, another help that I think would help restaurant owner is the media. You know, the media is all talking bad about us, but if, if there's some local media could help us running some commercial or or uh, free advertising, that will help us a lot too. Um, because bringing, bringing the business into consumer uh, eyes and face on a constant basis is gonna help us a lot. So I think we're lacking up the, the advertising, the marketing level of it. I mean, beside COVID, I can tell you that small business owner affects uh, from all different direction, not just the COVID. We have ever source issues. I don't understand why uh, nobody really look into that because <laughs> my bill, I'm a small uh, 21, I, I told you 2,100 square foot uh, restaurant space, but during the whole summer, my ever source bill went up over $2,000. I only use $500 worth of electric, but the delivery charges was almost double. So it's making, and then the tax added in, it making my bills like $2,200, $2,500. There was one month it went up to $2,900. And it's just, it's just crazy. Um, I don't know about any other restaurant owner issue, but I also have landlord issues um, where they don't give me a break. Um, you know, they expect to rent on time. I, I reach out to them to see if I can get any sort of sub, subsidize or any help from them. And the answer was no. So not just COVID. I mean, COVID is, is the root of everything. But once that kind of crumbled out on us, everything else surrounding us pretty much affecting us uh, from, from bills, from financials, from supplies. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the price of meat went up ridiculously high. Uh, the price of supplies, like I said, the gloves are so expensive, but we require to keep our restaurant clean, right? And the staff has to wear gloves um, and the mask. So those are the things that, I mean, if you sit down with me, I can go through the list with you of all the challenges that we have, but I understand that everybody, everyone trying to help us, but it sounds like uh, a lot with in interest is, is really steep for us. And whatever it is, it, it needs to be a little bit faster. Um, I apply for an SBA loan and now it's been what, seven months? I still have not heard from them. So I didn't I didn't get the loan like chip. Um, it's still in, in, in the going because they said that my business was so new. Um, so they don't have they don't have enough um, uh, sort of like reports and number for them to look at. So I still not hear from SBA for my loan. That's another, <laughs> that's another route that I don't get help with. So I don't know, I've been saying a lot of things. So hopefully, I keep you guys in uh, sort of like a loop for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tiffany. We really appreciate um, your remarks and and certainly um, you have not had an easy road. Um, and it seems like, uh, especially with your current closure due to a COVID case, um, you know, it's, it's limited opportunity, but we certainly appreciate you sharing your story. 
Um, I do want to give time for our third business owner to share um, a, a couple highlights in terms of what he has going on and then leave a couple minutes for Q&A um, for all of our panelists. So next, I would like to introduce John Pinderis. John Pinderis is the owner of Effie's Place, a very long time establishment, um, a legacy establishment really in uh, West Hartford on Park Road. John, uh, would you be able to come on and speak, please? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Senators, uh, for, for being here and joining us, and Kristen for putting it together. And, um, you know, I, uh, Chip and Tiffany both had very compelling stories, and, you know, I, I, I'm in the same boat as, as they are. Um, I agree with Chip that we need, uh, you know, long-term relief. Um, I too received the SBA loans and the PPP and, and so forth. Um, but, you know, I'm afraid of where I'm going to be uh, 30 years from now. Uh, my business has been open for 30 years. Uh, we've been ta in town for, for several years. Um, and I'm just, I've never been this nervous and this scared about, you know, the future of it, you know, a family legacy, like, like Kristen said. Um, you know, we've had uh, decreased revenue up to 60 plus percent. Um, we've had decreased takeout. In fact, recently our takeout um, just fell off again. And, and it's, I think at this point, it's less than what it was in April. Um, you know, with third party deliveries, delivery services, um, they take up to 30%. Um, and we've had increased costs, uh, like Tiffany was saying, our, our cleaning supplies. Um, minimum wage went up in October and is set to go up again in August. Um, you know, servers get a tip credit, but we have to be careful with that because they're not doing their normal serving duties now. So we're paying minimum wage to most of our servers um, because they're doing takeout um, and they're doing other job, job duties. And they're not making um, tips. I had a server <laughs> last Saturday night made $5 in tips um, on a Saturday night. And I had two servers in that, in, in, the, in the whole restaurant. Um, so obviously, you know, I had the, pay minimum wage to those, to those employees at that night. Um, so I have to stay on top of all of that. Um, I spent $10,000 uh, for a tent rental to cover five tables over my patio um, this summer so that we can have a little bit of all weather protection, you know, for rain and so forth. Um, five tables, $10,000 over the course of a few months. I, you know, that was, but I had to have it because otherwise I wouldn't have customers coming in. Um, our consumer confidence is, is way down. Um, you know, uh, the media tells the story. It, it just feel that, you know, restaurants are public enemy number one in this pandemic. Um, we, you know, to, to go back to, I believe Chip or, and Kristen had mentioned uh, the news story that came out and about the clusters and, and how they, they happen in restaurants and so forth. Well, yes, they are workplaces and, more restaurants are open than offices right now. So yes, there's gonna be a higher percentage coming from restaurants because we have a larger percentage and a larger number of these businesses that are running in the state right now. Um, but then to turn it back to the vaccine, um, we haven't, I haven't heard other sectors of the business, you know, business community being, um, for lack of a better term, beat up as much as restaurants have. And the vaccine, is being given to grocery store workers and, and, and others before restaurants. Well, why don't, if restaurants are, are spreading this, this event, this, this pandemic, this virus to each other, um, why can't we get vaccinated, you know, in one B? Um, why, why are we waiting later to get vaccinated to people that are a large part, um, you know, assumingly being transmitting this virus. So I think that this needs to be addressed. I think this is, this is one of my biggest points, um, you know, as far as the immediate goes that, that they should look at, uh, the CDC should look at vaccinating, the state should look at vaccinating um, restaurant employees sooner. Um, and, you know, I, I just I just feel that, uh, to, to Chip's point again, that we need long-term solutions um, financially, uh, but short-term, we need to, to kind of, you know, let people know that it's okay. I, you know, we, we had one COVID case uh, in the very, very beginning um, it was contained, uh, the employee self-quarantined and everything was fine. I've been in the restaurant, 
um, every day since, since this all started and, you know, knock on wood, I haven't gotten sick. Um, and my employees have all been good about wearing masks and about sanitizing and all that. Uh, that was our one case. We're hoping to keep it that way. Um, but the odds are starting to slim as we go longer, um, you know, without, without some help uh, through, through a vaccination. Um, but we, we just need, we, we need all these considerations to be made. So thank you again for listening and for putting this all together. Thank you, John. Uh, we really appreciate your remarks as well. Um, you know, and, and as all of our restaurants are incredibly um, necessary and vital to our uh, business community and, and really our town as a whole, um, we certainly appreciate um, again, your legacy business and how long you've been in business in town. Um, I would like to, uh, I see a couple questions in the chat. We are running up to um, probably about uh, 10 or so minutes left. I know that Mayor Sherry Cantor has to run to another commitment. So I'd just like to give her an opportunity to say a couple words before she jumps off. Thank you. I'll, I'll be very quick because I know this. there's a lot. But uh, again, Senator Blumenthal, welcome and thank you for being here. We're so grateful for all that you do and we're so happy that you are safe right now. Um, and uh, we're thinking about uh, both of all of our federal uh, delegation and uh, and obviously their safety and um, and all the, the commitment that they're doing. Um, we, you know, we I am listening and we are, uh, as Kristen, you know, Kristen's on the ground and doing what she can to help. I would say one other thing to the our uh, senators. Well, while I have you on the line, and I know you've been proponents of this, it's really important for our local, uh, municipalities to get this, uh, the help that they need. Our revenues are are down. Uh, our parking has, uh, similar to restaurants, has dropped. So it makes us uh, it makes it more difficult for us to provide the support for restaurants uh, that we need to do as well. So we we could help um, if if we had more resources. Um, as well, and um, more de the developed towns that serve regional assets that have paid parking are the ones that that are are hurting from that parking revenue. So uh, just to be aware of that as you move forward. Um, thank you all again, and we're here for you. Please keep the conversation going, and uh, predictability and understandability of what you guys are going through is so important. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mayor Cantor, for your very hard work and all of your dedication. Um, I have a couple of questions in the chat that I'll read off. Um, the first one is from Bob Cook, a managing partner with Max Oyster. Um, good morning, has a decision been made as to if frontline restaurant employees are included in 1B next uh, for the vaccination rounds? I know that this was something that John had brought up in his remarks, perhaps, you know, one of our state um, representatives or part of our state delegation might be able to respond to that. Kristen, uh, this is uh, Derek Slap. I can just jump in real quick and say that I know that those recommendations are being finalized and we're getting a lot of, I am, and I'm sure the other members of the delegation are getting um, a lot of uh, feedback from constituents about um, the, what the priority list sh should be. I think it was Chip who who first raised um, that comment, and you know makes a lot of sense. Um, so we're and then the governor ultimately it's going to be his decision in terms of priority list. But I'm I am happy, and I'm sure my delegation um, colleagues are as well to to relay those concerns about you know um, uh, who should be where on the priority list. Because certainly frontline workers are frontline workers. Um, I, I just would want to, you know, because I know there's other people who want to jump in, just say that um, we're a resource here. Um, so if, you know, restaurant uh, owners, restaurant tours need um, specific help when it comes to, you know, just cutting through the bureaucracy. And we, I've done this. I'm sure my colleagues have as well when it turns when it comes to liquor permits or rental relief, uh, um, you know, you name it, um, you know, we're here to help. So I'll, I'll put my contact information in as well. And I think state government, we need to be a bridge really to get, especially to the warmer months. So there's some great things the Lamont administration has done in terms of, um, uh, you know, not only um, just small businesses, but my, there's a, an office within DECD focused on um, minority owned businesses as well. There's a revolving loan fund as well. So th there is some help out there. Um, you know, I, I'm hoping that we could also get uh, in terms of the unemployment trust fund. And this is a 
a big lift, but I know our United States senators on, on the call here will, will do whatever they can, but to get that those loans to be forgiven, uh, because that'll really help um, offer some relief to, uh, to small businesses as well. So, um, you know, we're, we're here and we'll do whatever we can. And the marketing piece, uh, absolutely. I think everybody on this call has a role to play. Um, you know, when we go out to the restaurants to let our constituents know, um, my wife and I are going to be do, uh, going to a vert tomorrow night um, on LaSalle and I'll, I'll make sure to let, uh, let folks know. So thanks everyone. And I'll, um, I don't want to filibuster. So I'll, I'll let other people jump in. Thanks so much. Thank you, Senator Slap. Um, would any of our other panelists like to contribute any comments um, towards what uh, the really powerful stories that we heard from three of our restaurant tours today? I welcome you to do so now. I'd love to. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you, Chris, not only for putting this on today, but for your partnership throughout the pandemic. It's been really helpful to be able to get in contact with you all and hear what's happening with our businesses in town. And then to you, Senator Blumenthal, and I know Senator Murphy had to jump off. I echo what the mayor said, uh, so happy that you're safe and thank you for all you're doing for us uh, down in DC. And then to uh, Chip, Tiffany and John, thank you. Um, it's incredibly helpful to hear directly from you all and hear how you're being impacted. Um, I echo what Derek said in terms of, I think one of the areas we can be most effective is getting that messaging out there for you um, and sharing, um, that you know it is safe to dine indoors and that you all are doing um, what is more than what is expected of you uh, to keep folks safe. Um, I also found it interesting the curfew issue and so I'm happy to bring that back to the governor's office and see if there is any way um, that we can tweak that. I know that unfortunately because of bad actors you know you have to make rules you can't make policy um, you know you have to kind of make a one size fits all policy sometimes, unfortunately, and that's not the case here. Um, and so I'm happy to go back and, and have that conversation and see if there's anything that can be done because when you were discussing the sporting event, um, being a Yukon fan and having gone to restaurants uh, to watch back, you know, back before kids, um, I know that to have to leave in the middle of a game is ridiculous. So um, the other piece I'd say here in the state is I serve on the Energy and Technology Committee and hearing your concerns about the utility costs, know that we are working on that and I'll continue to work on that and I'll continue to um, lift the voice of small businesses and restaurants here in the state. Um, I'd also, not to put the senators on the spot, um, but what Derek said, I, I am very interested in this loan forgiveness, hearing what you've said, um, that is terrifying that you'd be living the next 30 years of your life having to pay off um, what was supposed to be a holdover to help you, right, during this pandemic. And so if there's a way we can um, fix that, I think that'd be important. I'm also um, interested in learning more um, in terms of rental relief. I know we've done the federal government, thank you so much, and here in the state we've done so much on rental relief, but is there a way to get more rental relief to you all um, at the restaurant owners? So I'll stop there, but um, thank you. This has been really, really helpful. If I may respond, uh, Kristen, um, to some of these really important remarks by Representative Gilchrist and Senator Slap. And by the way, thank you to the rest of the delegation for being on. You were really fortunate in West Hartford to have a superb delegation. So I'm delighted to see Representative Exum and Representative Farr on as well. And by the way, thank you to Chris Conway for the great work you've been doing. And a uh, great big shout out to Mayor Cantor with whom I have walked uh, the streets of West Hartford and visited many of the small businesses. So uh, wonderful to hear from Tiffany and Chip and John. And just to respond to that last point about the loans, th this point is one that I've heard from many, many small businesses around our state and we really need to address it. You know, the, the loan program was great and I think Chip rightly referred to it as a lifesaver. The PPP program was supposed to forgive loans and that principle ought to extend to the other loan programs as well, in my view, because otherwise we're just going to inhibit and hamper the recovery, which we all want. And it works against the whole stimulus program. Mayor Cantor is absolutely right. We need to focus on local aid, uh, we fought very hard for state and local aid as part of the latest pandemic relief program. 
as you well know, having followed the news, uh, Senator McConnell shut it down. And I anticipate that will be another area where we do a lot more. Tiffany raised the issue of the rising costs, or at least the very large cost burden of uh, the PPP, the protective equipment that is necessary, whether it's gloves or masks and so forth, which is a significant burden for small businesses. So I think we need to address mass production and distribution of PPE. If we, if we want people to use it, it ought to be made cost-free or at least minimally uh, cost burdensome. And uh, finally, on the point that uh, John and, and uh, Derek have raised about the uh, maybe revisiting uh, what the different stages of vaccination are going to be. Right now, that's a state decision. It is supposed to be informed by the CDC guidelines. Connecticut has been at the forefront. It's one of the eight states in the lead, even though only 2% of our population have been recipients of the vaccine. We are among the states, eight states, that are in the lead in vaccinating our people. Uh, as you well know, we are in for uh, deliveries, in fact, this week. Uh, we've received, I think it's about 167,000 doses so far. Another 150,000 should be delivered by the end of the week. Still, only a small part of our population. So I cannot emphasize enough how we need a national testing strategy. Leaving it to the states puts a burden on them, especially if we don't enable them to have enough vaccine. And Governor Lamont has done a terrific job and so has our state legislature in addressing the shortages of these supplies, but we really need a massive effort. The rollout has been way too slow, way too little. I've made this point. In fact, we are doing a letter, I think it's either today or tomorrow to Operation Warp Speed. The, uh, a number of us um, uh, in the United States Senate highlighting this problem. We've made it to the Biden transition team. I'm glad that you focused on it here, but uh, restaurant workers, people who are on the front line certainly should be given some priority because again, we're not gonna have people come into restaurants if either they or the restaurant workers don't have that vaccine. It's uh, one of the critical points to be made. Um, and I'm very glad that uh, John and um, Senator Slap have emphasized it here today. So uh, Kristen, thank you again. Thank you very much, Senator. Um, I would also just, as we're wrapping up and coming to the top of the hour, I would like to see if our other two state representatives, um, Kate Farrar and Tani Exum, if you have any words that you'd like to say in closing. Just in closing, I would like to um, jump in and say, first of all, thank you so much for organizing this. This was very informative and it's also very powerful to really hear the voices and the experiences as this is continuing to go on and has gone on for such a large period of time. It's so nice to see you, Senator Blumenthal and the delegation. We've been, been seeing each other quite a bit and um, I'm so grateful to be here. And I just want to say, um, as far as the marketing piece is concerned, I, I agree with everything that's been said before and I don't want to belabor the point. I do want to give a shout out to Ronnie Newton for really in the local area, putting the businesses, the restaurants and trying to keep the, the business buzz out there and doing what could be done to try and promote positively. I agree with you. I think sometimes the larger publications, what they often do is look for the headline. But when you read the article, I was the same way. I read through the article and it was really not the front of the restaurant. It was in the in the in, with the employees. That's a really important message as you're fighting to stay open and do everything that you can. And once again, I do believe all the resources, the PPE should not be cost prohibitive at this point is a part of our strategy to keep restaurants open and to keep everyone healthy. So anything that we can do to continue to keep the word, at least in our local area, and really promote for the media to be, to be give more of a fair and balanced um, a view of what restaurants look like, 
it's the lifeblood of our, our of our community. The restaurants and the retailers, they often work hand in hand. And um, I just want to continue to promote that. But thank you to the chamber um, and anything we can do to support. I'm going to be sure I put my email in the um, chat as well. But anything we can do to support, thank you so much for um, this opportunity. And please continue to reach out to us. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everyone. This is Kate Farrar, uh, newly sworn in in the 20th district. And I just have to thank all of the businesses uh, with a special personal thank you, um, since they are actually all 20th district businesses. Um, so just thrilled to have a chance to hear from all of you, because as Tammy so eloquently said, uh, you are why we're here. You are why we love our community. You are why our community and our state is such a strong and incredible place to live. And I think kind of the few things I'm taking away, um, particularly from your stories is number one is we absolutely are your partners, you know, with the federal delegation and wanna thank Senator Blumenthal and Murphy for being here today because that partnership with them and the mayor is gonna be essential to get through this. Uh, secondly, I think, you know, to your point around the vaccine, these decisions are still being made and we can be your advocates right now about this very important issue. Um, and I'll certainly take it up today and getting in touch um, with those on the vaccine advisory group about the needs to make sure that restaurant workers are treated just like any other frontline workers. And then finally, on the point of utility assistance, um, I think it is very relevant. You know, we talk a lot about utility assistance for individuals, families, seniors, um, but as we go through this process of recovery, um, we need to make sure that businesses aren't left out of that. So that to me um, is a highlight to me that I think um, I will make sure is at the front and foremost of this. Um, and we are your greatest advocates, as I said, I'll make sure to put my contact info as well in the chat. Um, I know we've all visited and, and tried to prop you up um, in the past 10 months, but we're going to keep doing that and kind of keep make sure that we spread the word um, of how we make sure that you're here each and every day as we get through this together. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Tammy. And thank you, Kate. Um, Chris, can you just verify you can still hear me? I can. Okay, great. Sorry, I was having a little bit of connectivity issues. Um, thank you to everyone today. Um, this has been so incredibly informative um, and really invaluable. We um, we really love all of our businesses and, and it is really the pride of our community. And especially, um, it is so important to hear these real life stories from our restaurateurs and what they're facing. Um, and absolutely, I'd like to echo um, some of the comments. We are so fortunate um, and, and really so lucky to have such a strong delegation, both at the federal level as well as the state level. Um, everybody works so tirelessly in order to help support our business community. Um, and I also would like to give um, a huge thank you to the Chamber of Commerce. They are a um, um, a incredible partner. Um, I could not have done uh, half of what I had done throughout the pandemic in terms of supporting our businesses without their support and their assistance. So we are very lucky to have such a, a great team here in West Hartford as well. Thank you to um, our three business owners who shared their stories. Thank you to the countless number more that we know are out there. Please continue to share those stories and, and please let us know how we can continue to support you. Um, Chris, I'd like to now turn it back over to you to say some final thoughts. Sure. Um, first of all, can everybody hear me? I, I've been having some internet issues. Can I get a yes. thumbs up? Yes, okay, you're good. Perfect. Um, I, again, it's just really a lot of, of thank yous and, and some shout outs. I, first of all, I just want to thank uh, the, the three restaurateurs who, you know, by extension, probably represented the other, uh, the 160 that we have in town. Thank you so much for your resilience your honesty and your vulnerability today. By sharing what you shared today, it's gonna to help, you know, certainly the chamber and the town, but our state and our, you know, our federal delegation really understand your needs and be able to continue to serve you. Um, I would just like to thank all of our panelists today, Mayor Cantor, you know, again, for the tireless work you do, our state delegation, Derek, Jillian, Tammy, and Kate, uh, again, thank you for your, your, your accessibility and your responsiveness uh, to listening to our needs and to, to the needs of our businesses. Of course, uh, I know Senator Murphy had to um, 
jump off with seven. Thank you so much for all you do. And please extend that to uh, Senator Murphy when you see him next. Um, and then, you know, last but not least, the, the chamber staff who makes all of these uh, programs run uh, seamlessly as possible. Um, last but not least, you know, Kristen, who is, is just simply tireless in her, her work and advocacy for our businesses. And then just one last shout out, uh, the, the media took a little bit of a hit today and I was watching the chat and I know uh, Ronnie got some love from people, but uh, Ronnie Newton really is a treasure and a true ally to the business community uh, in West Hartford. Um, Kristen and I on a weekly basis work with Ronnie to come up with creative ways to uh, draw the attention back to our businesses and keep people um, informed of how they're operating, that they are still operating, and how you can um, better uh, support them. And I'd just like to close with a challenge. Uh, Kristen said that there's 160 places that you can get food in West Hartford. Um, I'd like to just ask everybody to commit to uh, patronizing one of those or two of those or three of those over the weekend and, and let them know that uh, you know, you're there for them now and you're gonna be there for them when they uh, when this is all over. And with that, I think I'll close it out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.